how to self-publish a book step-by-step. -step. In this video, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. How do you self-publish? What's the step-by-step -step methods to do it? And I need you to stay all the way to the end. I'm going to tell you my trillion dollar tip of how I have become a five-time New York Times bestseller, 11 other best-selling categories, and there is one big thing you got to do. Stay tuned to the very end. <laughs> Five things I'm going to talk about in this video is never write a book, always speak it. How do you get the art and the illustrations done? Number three, do you do the editing? Do you hire an editor? Do you get a ghostwriter? How do you want to do that? Number four, do you self-publish or do you go get a publisher? And the big one, number five, is my trillion dollar tip. How do you absolutely sell a ton of books? I'm talking thousands and thousands of books. So get a pen and paper. We have a lot to talk about. So what do I mean by don't write a book, speak it. You have this lovely device right here. You got this, you got a tablet, you got anything that's just like it. And here's why I don't want you writing a book is that's when you get writer's block, when you're actually tippy typing along and then you go back grammatically and you reread the sentence or two before the paragraph and you're like, oh, that's not exactly how I want it. That's not how books get written. In fact, that's why a lot of people go on for years and years and years and years and years and still in their life and that's a lot of times they'll never even get a book done. So when I was first asked to write a book by McGraw-Hill in 2005, I said, I would rather chew glass than type. So that isn't really gonna work out. And they said, well, these things called ghostwriters. So after many of them, cause it took a few to get a really financially literate one that knew P&Ls and balance sheets as fast as I did, we began and I started talking. She would interview me and I would talk and talk and talk. So absolutely the book's mine, but it's my free form thought. And that's what a lot of you have to realize. Your creativity comes through talking, right? Through sharing, through interviews. And you want to record all of those, have them transcribed, and then you get onto it. You're going to hire an editor. I can just tell you the answer to that. Unless you are a grammatical editorial phenomenon. Well, first of all, that should be your skill set, and that should be what you do for business, not out here like writing them, like tippy typing them. I need you to speak them, number one. Number two, do you and how do you get the art and illustrations done? This is gonna cost anywhere between 500, could go up to about 5,000 depending if you have any pre-done logos, pre-done brands, pre-done thinking and illustrations. And like children's book, you gotta plan on a lot bigger budget on those because you're actually gonna have all of the, the, the drawings and all of the illustrations done that way. So for the cover art and illustrations, uh, there's Fiverr. There's actually your local colleges. There's a lot of ways you can very, very inexpensively get it done. In fact, you can put things out on different posts and different sites and let people be in a bidding war for who's going to actually get the art and then you put their name in it. So don't overspend in this area, especially those of you who are just beginning. You're not really sure what your brand is all about. By the way, whether it is you speaking the book and then getting your illustration and art done, once you get into the editorial process, right, and having whether it's a ghostwriter or you actually speak it, you've transcribed, and now you hire a professional editor to get that done, which is what I'm going to highly encourage you to do, is I want you detached from it. I want you to emotionally give everything. Uh, I always say books like, you know, your brain on paper. So I want you to brain dump all that you know and then hand it to an editor who's going to make it look phenomenal. I can tell you, if you would have told me that The Millionaire Maker looks the way that it was going to look at the end, there's no way that I would have come up with that. I needed to have given all the creativity to it, hand it to someone who actually knows how to lay out best-selling books. It's critical. Unless you are a pro at this, you're going to mess it up. And don't have your friends and family do it because they're going to have a bias towards you and they aren't going to be really aggressive about making sure that it's really straight and clean. So find a ghostwriter, find an editor. Again, they're all over the internet. If you don't have them, you can always call our office. We have tons of those people as our clients that we can refer out to you. All right. So we've talked about speaking your book, how to get the art and illustration done. Number three, we've talked about getting that editor or ghostwriter. And number four is do you self-publish it or do you like actually publish? Now, this is a big one. When Kyle and I we were doing our Make Your Kids Millionaire book, which is uh, going to be out April 2022. So whatever time you have watching this, whether it's before the book, go to makeyourkidsmillionaires.com and pre-buy it. If it's after, go to makeyourkidsmillionaires.com and get it there too. So in us deciding to do this book, it was really going to be more of like a story about both of our families and we we're going to self-publish it. Take it through Amazon, not difficult with the big database to become an Amazon and multiple category bestseller. But you know what? The more we got into it and the more it started framing itself, it's like, this is really for me, the fourth book in my Millionaire Maker series. So we went back to McGraw-Hill. We did get a retainer. 
shocked was I just wanted their high published, high editing, like process to be in this fourth book. You know, I shouldn't say it's my finale, but I can tell you those of you who have not gone through the publisher route, given that everything, everyone is eBooks and audiobooks, And honestly, if I'm you and I'm out there for the first time, I would self publish. I wouldn't even think about going to a publisher. Uh, my first book, first, first, first was actually Gorilla Wealth with Jay Conrad Levinson. And that was self published just between him and I. That book though, is what caused McGraw Hill to call me. So I wouldn't go to the publishing route, not in your first rodeo, not in your first book, unless you already have you're an influencer, you already have an enormous database, you just self-publish, go out for some good Amazons, you're, get your legs, right? Get your database, get your followers, get your social media presence, then think about going out to a publisher. But given this space of so few people going to bookstores, think of how many bookstores are closing. Uh, the entire model of how you get paid, who gets international rights, who gets foreign rights, all these things have to be negotiated. If you don't have a good literary or IP lawyer, I have probably one of the best in the world who defended the Rich Dad Poor Dad brand. So you want him? Call our office. Always you'll be able to click below in all our notes and uh, call our office. I have lots of resources and can help you get this done. I have done many, many, many books. So do you publish or self-publish in the beginning, self-publish, think about going to a publishing route. If you want the prestige, I'm going to say that and the expense, but there's a lot of restrictions. So I'm not going to go into all the restrictions on this video, but if you're serious about publishing a book, love to have those conversations. So right now I need you to make some comments. Are you about a new book? Do you have a book? Has there been a book stuck for years? How can we help you right now? While you're there making some comments, there's a subscribe button. So subscribe to my channel. You want five days a week content coming your way. So I'm here all the time. And in fact, we have some playlists. You can binge learn. I've got tons of content about money. The more we interact, the more I know what you want me to have videos about. So we talked about publishing, self-publishing. Let's talk about the big, big one. How do you sell a lot of them? Well, here's the mistake. Almost everyone, including all those high paid consultants that you all buy out there, you know, whether it starts at 4,000, 10,000, I can tell you to get a New York times or a big, big, like multiple uh, best selling book, you are well into six figures. If you're not spending a hundred thousand, I know on mine, depending on how many books in which category we published in, I've spent as much as a quarter of a million bucks to get some of these books done. Cause you have to pre-sell thousands of copies. Now there's all sorts of algorithms about how you're going to make the list. So for example, I've had to sell as much as 50,000 to head a head best bestseller list. I've sold as few as 9,800 to hit best selling list. Depends on the category, depends on the book. So you do want some help. You just don't want to do this blindly. Um, there's, there's tons of print on demand shops you can go to in the beginning, but I can tell you what I would do is put up a page. The minute you think you have a book, I would put up a page and I would start selling. And uh, I call those pre-orders and you say, well, what if I don't get the book done? Even if the book only lands at around 70, 80, a hundred pages, it's a book. And you're going to use it as a brochure for a bigger funnel and a bigger purchase price at the end anyway. But if no one's going to pre-order your book, why would you write one? There are too many consultants in the world right now about how to write a book and worse. They're even building out these eight week long master classes for you and no one's bought. How do you even know that anybody wants your book, wants your content, wants the frame of it? I'll give you one last story, a big one about my yes energy book. We sold over 50,000 copies in pre-sales. We had to because of the way that it launched, it was my yes energy book, right? The formula to do less and make more. So inside of that, it was a huge crowded category. You have to sell a lot of books. We were pre-selling and pre-selling and I have all sorts of strategies on how I pre-sold that many books. But in all of that, I kept doing focus groups. So the people who would buy my book, I would go back out to them. I would say, so is this what you want me to write about? Is this what you want yes energy about? And they're like, mm, no. So it was invaluable to do focus groups. I've done them on every one of my books. You get enough of your buyers, you gather them on a call or a webinar, zoom, and you say, so people, this is the content. These are a few chapters. This is what I'm looking at doing. Is this what you want? You're the one buying the book. This is the content you want. Then they'll start course correcting you. Then you go back for revision once, you know, you do one, you do two, you do three. So pre-orders critical pre-orders set up focus groups. It's my trillion dollar tip. The first thing you do, if you decide to write a book, you put up a landing page, put a little square up there. It says title to be determined, but I'm writing a book and I'm taking this amazing brain and I'm going to download it into a book. So if you need help, let us know again, subscribe to my channel. Let us know in the comments what uh, help you need. What I want to do right now though, is I'm going to send you to a quiz. 
So I do this financial personality quiz because I want to know who you are. And that personality quiz tells me a lot about you. And then from there, I'm going to send you out an application and uh, we'll see if we're a fit to work together. You'll have a conversation with my team and I got a whole bunch of amazing content to send right after your appointment. So I will see you on the other side of that conversation with my team.